Marais Mathieu French, Mij Marjo, born the 22nd of July 1946, is a French singer. She has recorded over 1,200 songs in 11 languages, with more than 150 million albums sold worldwide. Topic: <inaudible> Biography and career. Topic: <inaudible> Early years. Marais Mathieu was born on the 22nd of July 1946 in Avignon, France, the eldest daughter of a family of 14 children. The youngest brother was born after she moved to Paris. Her father Roger and his family were native to Avignon, while her mother Marcel Sophie was from Dunkirk. She arrived in Avignon in 1944 as a refugee from World War II after her grandmother had died, and her mother went missing. Roger, with his father Arcade, ran the family stonemason shop just outside the St. Veran Cemetery main gate. The Mathieu family have been stonemasons for four generations. Today the shop is named Pomps Funibus Mathieu Mardoyan, and is still owned by the family. The Mathieu family lived in poverty, with a huge improvement in their living conditions in 1954, when subsidized housing was built in the Malpene Quarter near the cemetery. Then again in 1961 they moved to a large tenement in the Qua des Oisho quarter southeast of the city. Roger had once dreamed of becoming a singer, but his father Arcade disapproved, inspiring him to have one of his children learn to sing with him in church. Murray included his operatic voice on her 1968 Christmas album, where it was mixed in with the Minuit Creations song. Murray's first paid performance before an audience, at age four, was rewarded with a lollipop when she sang on Christmas Eve 1950 during Midnight Mass. A defining moment was seeing Edith Piaf sing on television. Murray performed poorly in elementary school because of dyslexia, requiring an extra year to graduate. She was born left handed, and her teachers used a ruler to strike her hand each time she was caught writing with it. She became right-handed, although her left hand remains quite animated while singing. She has a fantastic memory, and never uses a prompter on stage. Abandoning higher education, at age 14 1961, and after moving to Quoi des Oisho, she began work in a local factory in Montfavet a suburb southeast of town where she helped with the family income and paid for her singing lessons. Popular at work, she often sang songs at lunch, or while working. Like her parents, she is a short woman at 1.52 meters, 5 feet in height. Her sister Monique, French, Mo born on the 8th of July 1947, began work at the same factory a few months later. Both were given bicycles on credit to commute with, making for very long days and many bad memories of riding against the mistral winds. The factory went out of business, so Marais and two sisters Monique, and Christiane became youth counselors at a summer camp before her rise to fame, a summer where she had her fortune told by tarot cards by an old gypsy woman, saying she would soon mingle with kings and queens. Marais is Roman Catholic, and her adopted patron saint is Saint Rita, the saint for the impossible. Marais' paternal grandmother Germaine Ney Chariton, assured her that Saint Rita was the one to pray to for hopeless cases. Beyond religion, like many artists, she is unabashed about superstition and luck. When asked to reveal some of her superstitions, she said, The most important one is to never mention any of them. She has stage fright, and can often be seen making the sign of the cross before moving out on stage. <laughs> Topic. Debut Mathieu began her career by participating in an annual singing contest in Avignon called On Chanty Dans Mon Cartier We Sing in My Neighborhood. Photos depict the affair as rather drab with a cheap curtain and one projector light. The stage was only 20 feet square, and the singer having to share that with a large piano and musicians. One cannot help but notice the large, boisterous, and mostly young audience. The judges sat at a table in front of and below the elevated stage. Anyone who signed the contract in the weeks before the show was allowed to sing. 
Talent scouts made this a worthwhile event for singers within hundreds of kilometers to participate in. Marais' private singing lessons were by Madame Laurie Collier, who was also a piano teacher in Avignon. Self described as very stubborn in her autobiography, she wrote about singing love songs that the audience thought were inappropriate for a young girl. Thus, losing to Michelle Tour in 1962 when she sang, Les Cloches de Lisbon at the first contest, and losing again in 1963 singing Edith Piaf's Lumne Alama in 1964, though, she won the event with another Piaf song, Le Vienne Rose. Her win was rewarded with a free trip to Paris, and a pre-audition for the televised talent show Jeu de la Chance Game of Luck, where amateur singers competed for audience and telephone votes. Her participation and train fare were arranged by Raoul Colombe, the deputy mayor of Avignon. Accompanied by a pianist at the studio, and dressed in black like Piaf, she sang two Piaf songs to the audition judges and left dispirited. Non-French cannot hear it, but Parisians at the studio made fun of her Provençal accent, and her dyslexia scrambled words. For example, her sister and current manager Monique, is called Mitite. Because Marais couldn't pronounce petite as a child, during a 1965 summer gala, added to the Enrico Marcius concert by Raoul Colombe, her first manager, she met her future manager Johnny Stark. Marais and her father both thought he was an American based on his name and manner, and nicknamed him L'Americaine. Stark had worked with singers such as Yves Montand, and the relationship between him and Mathieu is often described as resembling that between Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis Presley. Stark is credited with making her a star and the successor to Piaf. By 1968, under his careful management, she was France's most popular singer. Topic. Breakthrough 1965 to 1967. Marais was invited to Paris by the impresario Regis Dercourt to sing on the Song Parade television program, on 19 November 1965. Stark promised to write to her, but after months of waiting she gave up on him, and accepted Dercourt's offer. The truth has never been revealed how, but Marais was suddenly moved up to compete live on the Sunday 21 November 1965 episode of Jeu de la Chance, a talent segment of the popular French program Télé de Manche. Stark's ex-wife Nanu Tadai worked at Studio 102, and probably recognized Marais, as she participated in her earlier pre-audition. Mathieu explained that Song Parade offered only one chance to sing, while Jeu de la Chance offered many chances to sing, but only if she won, and she intended to win. Both the studio audience and telephone voters gave her a slight lead over five-time winner Georgette Lemaire, so the producers called it a tie. Johnny Stark officially became her manager that night, and with his longtime assistant Nadine Dubert, helped prepare Marais to win the contest the following week and bury Georgette. Stark and Le Maire had a mutual dislike. In a short film called La Guerre des Piaf, War of the Sparrows, Georgette and Marais are interviewed separately, both are small and the same height. Marais is surrounded by her sisters Monique and Christiane, with Johnny hovering in the background as she is interviewed for the first time on camera. She appears to be uncomfortable, staring at the floor during many of the questions, even looking dumbfounded once, like a deer in the headlights. Johnny finally comes to her rescue. In a later interview, she underscored the importance of the event, stating, For me, Paris was the end of the world. I never took a train or saw a camera before. I did not know what the outcome of the adventure would be. In the middle of her seven consecutive performances on Télé de Manche she performed a concert at the Paris Olympia, which propelled her to stardom. She signed with Bruno Coquatrix, the owner of the Olympia, on 20 December, and performed the only three Piaf songs she had memorized, two days later. She was hailed in the press, in France and abroad, as the Piaf d'Avignon Sparrow from Avignon, in reference to Piaf's nickname, Sparrow of the Streets. All was not going well at this point. Mathieu said, I was managed to such mimicry of my idol that I thought I was not able to do anything else. 
It was instantly one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Stark then abandoned the Piaf direction he was taking her. The Olympia performance convinced a skeptical Paul Moriat to work with Murray, and songwriter Andre Pascal joined forces to develop her into a successful act. Together they wrote new modern material for her, Mon Credo, Vienne Dans Ma Rue, Le Premier Etoile and many other hit songs. Her first album En Direct de l'Olympia, on the Barclay label, was released in 1966. Highly acclaimed, along with the singles and EPs from it, the album made her a star outside France. A regular early contributor of material was Francis Lai, who wrote two songs, C'est un nom, and Un homme et une femme for her first album, and often accompanied her with his accordion on television. Her first record was recorded in the Emmy Studios, with Paul Moriart's band. Mathieu's success led her record company, Barclay, to claim that they controlled 40% of the French pop disc market. Murray spent all of 1966 and 1967 touring. It was then, during a car ride to another concert, that Stark advised Murray that she was finally debt-free, and worth more than a million francs $200,000 USD in 1967. She had always prayed that she could get her family out of poverty, but the touring and singing were much more important at the time. In her autobiography, she stated her first major purchases were a vehicle for her father's business and a large home for her parents and siblings. Most importantly, she had a telephone installed for the family, so her parents no longer had to go to the pharmacy to talk to her while she was in Paris. Her one regret, was that she was unable to see her grandmother Germaine in the hospital before she died because of all the tour contracts. Marais arrived in Paris with two dresses and a change of underwear, and Johnny set her up in style, sent for Marais' two oldest sisters, and let them go shopping for a week. He then rented her a home and a maid in upscale newly after she had one, and made sure she only had her singing to worry about. Johnny recorded all the expenses though, and he was fully compensated before a franc was ever put in Murray's account. Murray sang twice at the London Palladium during royal performances before the Queen and her family. Once in 1967, and again in 1969. Following her second performance, her French cover of Engelbert Humperdinck's The Last Waltz, La Dernière Valse generated much publicity in Great Britain and became a hit record even though the original had been number one only a few months previously. She also toured Canada and the United States, where she appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show and The Danny Kaye Show. While on a visit to Hollywood, she met Elvis Presley, and in Las Vegas, Nevada sang with Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. Career 20th century 1967 to 2000 Although the popularity of Mathieu's genre has suffered, given the domination of rock and roll and the global lack of interest in non-English popular music during her most profitable years, she remained a popular artist in France and Europe. Many thousands of fans have met her before and after performances for autographs and well wishes over the years, and the common refrain is how well she treats her fans. She easily interacts with the public. While the Mathieu sisters are quite wealthy, they have also made the songwriters extremely wealthy. Most of the record profits go to the authors, whereas Murray had to tour and perform concerts live and on television. While on tour in February 1968, Mathieu was in a car accident in which she fractured one of her vertebrae. The injury sidelined her for three months. She writes in her book that they received a note which said, We will get you next time. But it was not proved to be anything but an accident. In 1971, Barclay was unable to meet the demands for records. Johnny Stark then made a contract for Philips Records to issue all the singles, and EPs, resulting in a $1 million lawsuit from Barclay for breach of contract. Barclay's contract was scheduled to run until 1972. In 1972, Mathieu toured Canada and produced a live album. Johnny Stark suffered his first heart attack while making arrangements for this concert. In 1974, Mathieu formed her own publishing company Abilene Music. Today this company is involved in publishing, printing of music material. In 1983, Mathieu formed another publishing company Abilene Disc. 
This is the company used to publish recordings, and her management agency run by her sisters Monique and Christiane. In 1985, Mathieu joined Placido Domingo in performing a children's show called The Tales of Cree Cree. This television special used puppets along with 50 years of traditional Mexican songs, producing popular versions in Spanish, French, and English. Murray's father Roger died this same year. In 1986, Mathieu performed a concert in Beijing, China. In her autobiography, she states she was the first Western performer to give a concert in the city, but this was in error, as at least two other Western performances preceded hers. In 1988, W. Corder's Sons, a German rose breeding company introduced the Marais Mathieu rose to match her favorite lipstick color. Mathieu also published her autobiography with co-author Jacqueline Cartier. The title is Oui je Krish. Yes, I believe. Which is taken from the lyrics of Mon Credo, her first recording. The book was seen as a final chapter in her career. The French public had pretty much disowned her, as a conservative relic. She was considered a pre-revolution Gaullist figurehead, and hated by the left. Stark was also exhausted and overweight by this time. Pierre Delano wrote a passionate song about Joan of Arc in La Demoiselle d'Orlans for Marais. The final lyric, When I think of all I have given France and she has forgotten me, was truly how the singer felt as she was made a caricature by the communists in power. She used her fists in punching the air while singing the song. On the accusations of being docile, Mathieu writes in her autobiography that she and Johnny Stark understood each other. She wanted to be a singer, and he was tired of people who just wanted to be famous. They were both hard workers, and he kept her schedule filled with lucrative contracts. She also writes that she was forbidden to read the press, and, having peeked at some of it, was content to follow that rule. Stark, of course, had a heavy hand in manipulating the press. Murray writes that her mother was often surprised to read on the front page that she was engaged to someone famous, or was going to be in a movie by some famous director. Her guiding principle was just to sing, and never have her family return to the tenements of Quad des Oisho. Many photographs and films from the early years show the life around Johnny Stark's villa in Roquefort le Bédel, south of France. The villa, also named Le Bédel, allowed everyone to escape from Paris and relax. The home supported Johnny's telephone addiction with 28 telephones, with each car also having a phone. Mathieu lived here with her aunt Irene, and brothers and sisters would often visit. The pool was designed to be shallow all around, and deep in the center, as Marais has a fear of drowning, and never learned to swim. The property was sold after Johnny's divorce. In 1989, President Francois Mitterrand invited Mathieu to sing a tribute to General Charles de Gaulle. Johnny Stark died the same year after his second heart attack. Divorced and estranged from his family, Johnny was entombed in the mausoleum Mathieu in Avignon. Upon Stark's death, everyone said that no one could replace him, and it proved true, but by then the entertainment press had also matured. Johnny Stark left behind a legal bloody mess. It took Mathieu and her lawyers years to close out and process his estate. I was severely depressed, but I got out without needing analysis. The most controversial event of Mathieu's career, according to the media of the time, occurred when she took over Stark's office, and ended her business relationship with Nadine Joubert. She lost confidence in Nadine who tried to modernize her act after Mathieu's L'Americaine album failed miserably, with the strain of Stark's legal affairs having set her back financially. Her sister Monique stepped in to become her business manager, and the two women have remained profitable in the industry ever since. In December 1990, she gave a series of concerts at the Palais des Congrès in Paris. Many videos of the concert are available, and it shows her back on top, with a huge production. A large cast of musicians and singers, was meant to take the concert to a level even a rock and roll audience could appreciate. In 1993, she released two albums devoted to her idol, Edith Piaf, essentially retracing her roots. One album was in French, the other, in German. In January 1996, Vu Li Dyers was released. Mathieu did not perform live in France to promote the album, preferring rather to go to Los Angeles, where she gave a tribute to Judy Garland. 
She was dressed by Christian Lacroix. In 1999, Mathieu released a German album Alice nur ein Spiel, with Francis Lai on accordion. Topic: Career 21st Century 2001 Present. In 2002, Mathieu released her 37th French album, De T.S. Mains, followed by a series of concerts at the Paris Olympia in November. Mathieu celebrated the 40th anniversary of her career at the Paris Olympia on 24 November 2005, and released her 38th French album, Marais Mathieu 2005. The performance, and an interview, were recorded and released in widescreen DVD format in 2006, however, the DVD was in European video format only. Mathieu joined with Jean Claudric and his orchestra for this concert, and has worked with him ever since. In 2007, Mathieu supported presidential candidate Nicolas Sarkozy, the mayor of Neuilly, where she has resided since coming to Paris in 1965. Sarkozy was elected President of France, and Prince of Andorra. In 2012 she did not support any candidate publicly. On 1 November 2008, she was a guest of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin in Moscow, and performed a concert in his honor. The two visited the tent of visiting Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. In November 2010, she was awarded the Russian Medal of Friendship by President Dmitry Medvedev at a state dinner. She was in Russia and the Baltic states throughout November, returning to Paris after a concert in Warsaw, Poland on 28 November. In January 2011, Marais was promoted from Chevalier the 9th of December 1999 to Officier of the Légion d'honneur. In November 2011, Mathieu cancelled her concert in Israel for the second time in 2011. The promoter again failed to meet the required ticket sales. In March 2012 Marais, with Jean Claudric and his orchestra, were in Siberia, Russia visiting three cities, Perm the 21st of March, Tyumen the 24th of March, and Yekaterinburg the 26th of March. During an interview in Moscow, Mathieu mentioned that the group Pussy Riot had committed a sacrilege in the church by having a political demonstration against President Putin. French television programme, Honest par Couché edited out the second half of her statement, and called her a tool of President Putin. Her lawyer André Schmidt sued the station for defamation. The suit was dismissed at trial in July 2014. The part that was edited out was, As a woman artist and a Christian, I beg the indulgence of these three girls. The group of three women were convicted and sentenced to two years in prison for being hooligans, and inciting religious hatred. In October 2012 Mathieu announced on her web page that she is re-releasing her Chanty Piaf, with two new recordings added, in celebration of her 50th year as a singer, and the 50th year of Piaf's death. Also that month, she had to cancel some of her shows in Russia Rostov, Volgograd, Samara, and Afar. She had contracted these shows through a Yekaterinburg company called MixArt, through her Malta agent Forza Investment Limited. She stated that MixArt acted in a highly unprofessional and even fraudulent way. She was able to salvage the tours on the 3rd of November 2012 in Moscow, the 5th of November 2012 in St. Petersburg and the 7th of November 2012 in Krasnodar. She also performed the rescheduled concert in Afar on the 7th of March 2013. In December 2013, her lawyers won a lawsuit against MGM Home Entertainment for failing to compensate her production company Abilene Disc for the 1967 song Les Yeux de Lama, The Eyes of Love, used in the German version of the movie Casino Royale. Since 2009, she has been the main guest star of the Spaskaya Tower Military Music Festival and Tattoo, held on Moscow's Red Square. On 5 September 2013, during her concert event of the festival, she sang in a light dress under an icy rain and a gusty wind, refusing to take an offer for a coat as disrespectful to the people freezing in the stands. Russian TV's Culture Channel praised her performance on that day as a feat. Mathieu had an active tour schedule for 2014, celebrating her 50th year in show business she dates her career from the year she won her first singing contest in Avignon. 
Her first concert was going to be in Kiev, and she held out hope it would go on, but finally cancelled it seven days before. Due to the instability, her France 50th anniversary tour ran from October to November 2014. Mathieu performed her 50th anniversary tour in Germany and Austria from 1 to 16 March 2015, singing in 12 different cities to sell out crowds. She credits her sister manager Monique for keeping the general audience ticket prices reasonable. In March 2015 she announced on her web page that all the concerts in Russia were cancelled due to the economic situation. On the concert website, it states that the Russian currency had collapsed, and it was no longer possible to finance the concert and travel arrangements. On 26 May 2015, Mathieu sang at the Culture Without Borders Culture Sans Frontier project at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris. A concert titled The Allies of the Great Victory, a musical story. With the participation of jazz band of Igor Butman, Russia, USA, other soloists are Alan Harris, USA, Sanya Croata, Israel, Yakov Yavno, USA, Igor Butman, Mikhail Glus, Russia, Polina Zizak, Russia, and other celebrities. On the 30th of July 2015, she returned after 41 years to Byblos, Lebanon, for the Byblos International Festival. Her sister's manager Monique, and Marie France accompanied her mother on the trip, who then made a brief appearance with her on stage, escorted by the family servant Hervé Marc. On 20 March 2016, Mathieu's mother died at the age of 94 from a pulmonary embolism. She was entombed in the mausoleum Mathieu at the St. Véran Cemetery in Avignon. Personal life Mathieu has never been married and has no children. Unlike other celebrities, she does not have a publicist, or feel the need to expand on her private life. She is a devout Catholic and still participates in Catholic Mass with her family. Discography <inaudible> 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 Topic Bibliography We oui, Je Krish, yes, I believe, with Jacqueline Cartier, Paris, Robert Laffont, 1987. Moa's Historia Lovey My Destiny. Love Story, Google Books, translation by Jacob Zalmanovich, Moscow, Liters, 1991.